out of the morning mist, she appears like a great ghost ship, back from some legendary campaign. But USS Missouri, BB-63, battleship of the Iowa class, is coming through Golden Gate to begin a new career in the United States Navy. May 10, 1986, 10,000 guests gather to watch her recommissioning. Margaret Truman speaks. She christened Missouri in 1944. I swung it and yelled, I christened the USS Missouri. Secretary of Defense Weinberger addresses the ship's company. Captain Case, and officers and men of the uh, Missouri, you have very important work to do, and you have a first-rate ship in which to do it. And you and your shipmates throughout the fleet have been working far harder than most of our countrymen might ever comprehend. Everywhere that our national interest is involved, the Navy has been one of the most tangible instruments of that determination. He recalls the day more than 40 years ago when world attention focused on Missouri's quarterdeck. 1945, then the Missouri's entire superstructure was filled with young, exuberant sailors, men who were uh, now in somewhat later years, and who were then peering down at the main deck where all of the leaders of the nations that had gathered as allies in the war, World War II, were on America's side. We're awaiting the final surrender of Japan. We are gathered here, representatives of the major warring powers, to conclude a solemn agreement whereby peace may be restored. The men watching have endured four years of hard fighting, island to island, across the Pacific. In the course of this long struggle, the battleships of the U.S. Navy have forged a new role for themselves in warfare. Early in the war, the key to victory at sea moved to the aircraft carrier and its flights of warplanes. With the battleship's enormous firepower becomes the prime support for amphibious operations. Radar has arrived. Electronic eyes extend the ship's vision to match the reach of its long-range guns. They pound beaches held by the enemy pave the way for invasion. When the enemy attacks from the air, the battleship's massed firepower is directed skyward. Their guns provide primary air defense for the American fleet. The battleship's thick armor is proof against air attack. Their size enables prolonged operation at sea. They routinely refuel cruisers and destroyers from their capacious tanks. They are manned by battleship sailors, skilled at handling these biggest of ships, who know they are the best of their kind. In 1943, new battleships begin to appear on the firing line. The Iowa class. Iowa, New Jersey, Missouri, Wisconsin. In armor and armament, they are the latest development of the big gun capital ships that began with HMS Dreadnought 40 years before. Most of all, 
these new ships have been built for speed, capable of 30 knots and more to travel in company with the carrier striking forces that are spearheading the U.S. drive across the Pacific. Now, in 1945, one of these ships, Missouri, is the platform for the final scene of the greatest war in history. General MacArthur presides at the surrender of the Empire of Japan after a four-year struggle that raged across the vast distances of the Pacific. The whole ceremony lasts only 23 minutes. These proceedings are closed. The war is over. The carrier task groups that prowled the Pacific disperse. The sailors, most of them, go home. In a war of carriers and air power, the battleship has proved itself. In the years that follow, one by one, the older battleships are scrapped. North Carolina, Alabama, Massachusetts, and the pre-war battleship Texas become honored memorials in their home states. Their day is over. The new Iowa-class battleships see combat again when the Korean War breaks out, five years after World War II. Once again, they sock targets as far as 20 miles inland with 16-inch broadsides. Aboard one of the battleships, General Douglas MacArthur watches a nighttime bombardment of North Korean positions. During the years after Korea, all four Iowa-class ships, the only battleships remaining in the world, are mothballed. With the advent of nuclear weapons, missiles, space satellites, the rugged profile of the battleship seems out of place. In remote anchorages with other mothballed ships, Iowa, Missouri, New Jersey, and Wisconsin await an uncertain future. Birthed at Puget Sound Naval Shipyard, Missouri becomes a feature attraction for visitors, as many as 180,000 people a year. She's designated a national historical site. When a ship becomes a landmark, her life must surely be over. On cold winter days, the ship is left alone. its decks and spaces echoing with memories of an historic past. Days of seagoing adventure that seem gone forever. In 1967, New Jersey is called out of retirement for service in Vietnam waters. Modernized with new electronics and other equipment, she serves with distinction in shore bombardment missions. is again mothballed. But now a different future begins to dawn for the big ships. Naval planning for the 1980s begins to recognize that the size and speed of the battleships offer unique advantages. 
coupled with new developments in technology, they can give the battleship a new lease on life. New Jersey is first. In July 81, she's under tow again, heading for reactivation at Long Beach Naval Shipyard. She is made ready in time to serve off Lebanon in 1983. Iowa is next to go into the yards, then Missouri, and finally Wisconsin. May 1984, as Missouri leaves Puget Sound Naval Shipyard that has been her home for 25 years, the city of Bremerton gives the ship a real send-off. The mayor is here, along with Miss Kitsap County, and hope is expressed that Missouri will someday return. And uh, everybody that was involved in the committee got together and we made a big ignition key for the Missouri so they could get it started once they got her put together. Well, just so it doesn't get too far away, we have a great big long rubber band on the end of that key. Underneath, there's a sense of pride that Missouri still has work to do. A plank owner on the old Missouri, Zeb Whittaker, speaks for a lot of people. Put the Missouri in commission in 44 and got off on 48. Well, uh, I, I hate to see it go, but uh, that's what she was built for. Here in Bremerton, people are watching the turning point in the life of a great ship. For the first time in a quarter century, Missouri feels water moving under her keel. The sentiment people feel is for a ship that is a symbol of sea power. But more than sentiment is at stake. Even as she begins her voyage down the coast to Long Beach Naval Shipyard, Missouri shows the long, clean lines for which her class is famous. Lines that are fully visible when the ship stands in dry dock and the sweep of her bow is fully exposed. As Missouri begins her return to service, the medallion that marks the spot of the surrender ceremony is carefully wrapped and stored for safekeeping. The great seal of the state of Missouri covered against dirt and damage. Necessary precautions, a thorough modernization is underway. The workmen swarming over her superstructure are doing more than bringing a classic ship back to life. They are working to bring her into the 1980s with fully modern electronics and to expand her formidable strike capability. In the scale by which a ship's life is measured, Missouri and her sisters are young. With 10 years service behind them, these ships can look forward to at least 20 more years of useful life. The basic fabric of the ship, its heavy duty features are preserved. The bridge will retain its 17 and a half inches of armor, one of the features that makes the Iowa class the most heavily protected Navy ships ever constructed. Deep in number one turret, the 16-inch guns that are the battleship's trademark are put through their paces. When we finish with the Orioles, we're going to put the uh, air in the counter-recoil system. Uh, uh, take, yeah, take the uh, set-off valve off. Uh -huh. The four 20-ton propellers are removed, refinished, replaced. Moving tons of bronze receives the same meticulous attention given the smallest detail in overhaul.
the solid craftsmanship that built Missouri is still at work as the shipyard prepares her for a new life at sea. You're getting the super heater too, right? That's right. Number eight water? Number eight water. Okay, then they're going to switch over to number seven, right? A newly modernized battleship meets some of its new crewmen. Sailors fresh from boot camp are introduced to the traditional art of line handling. They may be sons and grandsons of those who heaved the lines and manned the ship in the far off days of World War II. Forward, midship's half, taking all lines. Forward, midship's half, taking all lines out, sir. <laughs> Four midships have all lined in. Underway. Very well. Ship colors. Ship colors aye, sir. All engines ahead one third. All engines ahead one third aye, sir. Sir, all engines answer ahead one third is getting nine or nine or nine or revolutions from maneuvering combination. Very well. For each of these great ships, life begins again when she finally leaves her berth for the open sea testing how new systems and new people work together. Ralston, what do you have on uh, Skunk about uh, five degrees off the uh, port bow? Yes, sir, it's a uh, Skunk India bearing 255-21,000. Uh, course 075 Once again, the ship feels herself pursuing a course at sea, steered by the guiding hands of men who carry on with the skills and dedication of those who fought her to victory in other days. This time, they have weapons and sensors undreamed of in the past. In Iowa's darkened combat engagement center, technicians watch over displays of tactical data covering an entire ocean. They pinpoint targets and direct the ship's multiple cruise missile launch capability. Evaluator, I have an update on the Kenda. Very well. So track history? Yes, sir. Track history looks consistent. Engagement control officer, we have an update on the Kenda, bearing 300, range 140 nautical miles. Very well. Send the information to Tomahawk Weapon System. Tech Lashing Officer, we have an update on the Kenda class, bearing 300, range 140 nautical miles. I'm sending the information to the Tomahawk Weapon System for updated database. I understand, 300, 140 nautical miles. Have you finished updating the Tomahawk plan? Yes, sir. I have a 90% PX using plan four. Very well. PEO, we have finished updating the plan on the Kenda class. I have a 90% PX. Plan four, recommend using Three Tom Hawks in accordance with the ship's doctrine. I understand. I understand the act of the L4, uh, in plan only, stand by for permission to fly. All right. Send the plan only to the launch control console. All right, sir. Launch, engagement. Launch, I. Stand by for plan only, plan. The ship can launch attacks with up to 32 Tomahawk cruise missiles. Execute launch sequence. Execute launch sequence, uh... Launch sequence. During the same exercise, Iowa's guns come into play. Computer operators make their 16-inch rifles ready for a salvo. All stations report ready for call for fire. All stations report and ready to call for fire. Report ready to call for fire. Go ahead and pull ship's grid. Ship's grid. Their procedures five, and much nine, of their equipment five, zero, are 40 years five, six, old, two, but they can still put more ordnance on target faster one, zero, two, zero. and farther than any other gunnery system in the world today. Turret one, all guns, one round load. Turret one, all guns, one round load. Shoot.
This is the battleship today. A heavily armed missile ship whose size and power still offer potential for development along the fast-changing frontiers of naval technology. Men of the sea know far better than the rest of us that a ship is no mere inanimate object. It takes on all the characteristics of a living thing to those who live on it and make it work. And this particular ship is very special in that regard. And as you walk Missouri's passageways and dine in her mess halls, sleep in her birthing spaces and man her battle stations, I ask you to listen for the footsteps and the ghostly voices of those who had gone before you. They speak to you of honor and the importance of duty and the love of country. They remind you of your own traditions. And their memory, recalled here today, reminds us all that you are at the same time the inheritors and the makers of naval history. <laughs> 